and welcome to uh, CORAL's OER Hangout. My name is Carl Blythe and I'm the director of CORAL and I'm really excited to have uh, uh, three uh, teachers today, three French teachers who will be talking about how they have adapted an OER. That's the focus of our talk today, tonight. Our Hangout title is Talk to Teachers Who Have Adopted and Adapted OER. And as I said, they all three have adapt, adopted and adapted the same OER. So that will give us a kind of a thread, kind of a fil conducteur that makes all of this more coherent. Um, even though they'll be speaking about a French OER, it, if you don't, if your lang foreign language that you teach is, is another language, don't worry, because it should be applicable to people who teach different foreign languages and use different OERs. So um, I want to mention also at the beginning that we, at Coral, we have developed an OER course that really explains the ins and outs and the details of OER, from how to find OER, uh, to how to implement OER, how to remix or adapt OER, the, um, the basics about co uh, Creative Commons licenses, because licenses are so important to uh, understanding the wonderful world of OER. So you'll find that under, if you go to the CORAL homepage, there's a tab that says about, and that's general information about uh, CORAL. And just uh, from that drop down menu, select o uh, open education, and we'll give you lots of background information, including that course on uh, open education and OER. So uh, let me introduce our speakers tonight. Okay, it looks like we lost Carl. Um, this is Sarah from CORAL, so I'll just introduce the presenters while we wait for Carl to come back. Um, so we have Alexandra Gouillon from a French professor from South Puget Sound Community College in, uh, that's in Washington, right? You yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we have Don Michael, a French teacher from Reynoldsburg City Schools in Ohio and Valérie Morgan, a French lecturer from California State University San Bernardino. So they'll be talking to us very briefly about their experiences and then um, we'll do Q&A after that. So um, Alex, would you like to go first? And sure. Yeah, thank you. Hi, <laughs> my name is Alex Guiron and I am an associate professor of French at South Puget Sound Community College. I first discovered Français Interactif way back when I was teaching at the Alliance Française up in Seattle. I uh, originally discovered it through uh, a graphic uh, called La La Modette, which is in Texas French grammar, and I found it to be a playful and accessible and engaging and well-presented way of introducing what's a rather difficult concept in French, which is uh, a type of passé composé, a type of past. Um, it led me to use Texas French grammar more and more, and from there I discovered Français Interactif. Uh, back then I was still teaching at the Alliance Française, so I didn't have a choice of textbook, but uh, I eventually moved to Olympia, where I'm in a very small French department. In fact, right now the French department is me, so I get to pick my book, and uh, it was very uh, very quickly, I decided to adopt FI and move away from Valette and Valette type books, which I find lack authenticity, lack um, idiomatic language, not very vernacular. They always feel a little dated, even when they're new and they're super expensive. Back then, it was about 2007, they, my students were paying about 200 bucks for that book, which I found to be hair raising. And I decided to choose Francais Interactif because I really liked that the material is authentic, that it's presented playfully. Um, I love the ancillary materials like the companion page that each chapter has and Texas French grammar, which I really um, I mentioned before and really, really like. I like that there's an emphasis on phonetics, which is lacking in other textbooks, and that there's a novel and brain-based way of acquiring vocabulary through the préparation du vocabulaire activities. 
Um, I, I really like the fact that grammar is approached via inference and not lecture. <laughs> so that's novel and also very effective. And also, and most importantly, Price. It's a really, really accessible book, especially considering that it's a high quality product. So those were all the decisions. Um, and I'd been using the book for a couple years when I um, won a grant from the state of Washington to develop OER material for the state of Washington. And I'm going to share my screen here. So this is um, the open course library and it's uh, the state of Washington runs it. Um, and it's an initiative to develop high quality courses and course materials. And uh, everything has a CC by license, all the course materials. The a major requirement for the program was that the textbook had to cost $30 or less. So for me, Francais Interactif was an obvious choice, a natural choice, and obviously I went with it. Um, it was a pretty rigorous process. There was a heavy emphasis on alignment between outcomes, objectives, and assessments, and a focus on universal design back when um, universal design wasn't quite such the buzzword that it is today. So I did overcome uh, some challenges adapting Francais Interactif to... Um, to my classes and for the open course library. Um, one of the big ones is that SPSCC runs on a quarterly system, meaning that the book had to get split into three parts instead of two, which seems like a simple um, process, except that um, some concepts as a result uh, get introduced in the second quarter instead of the first quarter. And I'm thinking here specifically of the passé composé, which I feel needs to be introduced as early as possible. So there are some, there was a little bit of shifting of material that I had to do for that to, to happen. Um, Another factor that I had to contend with is that the content load is not always um, very even from one chapter to the next. Uh, one example that jumps to mind is that chapter seven of the book is very content heavy. And I'm, I'm talking here specifically about syntactically new concepts. So concepts that don't occur in uh, my students' native languages, English, so and that they have to uh, really work on very hard. And so there's three big concepts that are introduced in uh, one chapter. And so that makes for a very, very, um, a lot of thinking on the part of my students, I guess. And another challenge, which is really unique to Washington State, is that we have a program called Running Start. Uh, high school students can attend college classes and graduate from high school with an AA if they have uh, a GPA um, that meets basic requirements. And that really does change the dynamic of the classroom at the community college. Um, we have students who are between the ages of 16 and 19, and most of them live at home with their parents, uh, their commuters, so they're not really experiencing the, you know, away from home for the first time and hanging out with friends. And so I had to adapt some of the material to make it more relevant to them um, in terms of content. So um, yeah, that's, those are the big, big changes I had to make. I'm still happy that I made the switch to this book. I'm going to continue to use it as long as I teach French and as long as, uh, as uh, it's available to me. Um, I also do want to note that I'm very grateful for the new edition, the, um, the changes that you made to the book, I think, really improve it for the better. So that's all I've got. Thank you so much for developing this amazing material. And I'm very grateful that it's available to me. Thanks. Um, so th thanks, Alex.
and we'll come back to you with some questions about how you've perhaps adapted it to your particular context in Washington. So let's uh, pass it over to Dawn. Okay, uh, bonsoir. Um, so I am currently a high school French teacher, but I started my career teaching university level um, for, let's call it 10 years, so I don't have to count right now. Um, so my training was as a university teacher, so I'm definitely more comfortable with college level materials. And then I started teaching high school as well as some adjunct work in 2002. Um, and I used a variety of um, high school level textbooks, none of which made me very happy for a variety of reasons. Um, mostly because starting out as a university level teacher, university materials don't spend a lot of the time in the imagine your name is Juan and you and your friend um, Julio are on the subway in Madrid and all these kind of imaginary scenarios that a lot of high school and junior high materials go. So I'm more comfortable with the university level materials and I found myself in a situation where uh, the textbooks that I had were outdated. They did not align to the new actful proficiency based standards and the state of Ohio standards which switched to proficiency based and I wasn't satisfied. I also didn't have a textbook budget and I was familiar with Texas French grammar already. I'd use that as a supplement. So when I really started diving into Francais Interactive, I uh, was very, very pleased with what I found there. Um, so I would say in 2012, um, I started using Francais Interactive as the basis for my level one and level two courses. So I kind of divvied it up um, into what you would do as first semester I did as French one and then what you would do is second semester I did is French two, leaving out a few things because there are some things that aren't necessary in level two. Um, our target level is not as high, so students don't need to be able to use the subjunctive and you know the passé. The what's what Spanish speakers know as the preterite, the perfect and the imperfect. They don't have to use those handily um, to hit novice high in high school. Um, but um, at, when I rolled it out, I did pretty much use. Um, I did pretty much use the, um, the materials exactly as they were, but over time, I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, over time, I um, started adapting to more closely align with the state of Ohio and national ACTFL standards because I was teaching for proficiency and not for the discrete grammar mastery that you know is, was being focused on. So um, I wrote my curricula for levels one and levels two um, based generally on the, um, the Francais Interactive progression. Um, and I use um, many of the activities, especially the learning the grammar through inference. Um, I use the cultural readings. So like this is my curriculum guide and it's based on um, having trouble scrolling here with all these things going on my screen. Um, and it's based on um, the contents of Francais Interactif. Um, I use the video resources uh, quite a bit. Um, the nice thing about them is that they're native speakers, but they um, are using vocabulary that is um, included in the chapter. And so that makes, um, that makes the videos more comprehensible for my students. So they get the advantage of native speakers without uh, many authentic video resources are not comprehensible for novices. Um, and again, I'm hanging up a bit. Um, so what I've done over the years, I used to just use the, the textbook materials straight up. Um, but what I've done over the years is started adapting it more. So I'm just gonna show a couple tools for um, anyone else. Um, this is a tool called Insert Learning. Um, it, you can use it uh, for several, you can use several uses for free and then it is a subscription, but it allows you to take a web page um, uh, and so you can make a Google Doc or um, I'm not sure what the Microsoft version would be of that. Um, and you can insert um, questions into the document itself. You can also put video um, and other interactive activities in there. So I, um, sorry, I was trying to show 
here. Um, I have done that. You can kind of see in the background here. This is from chapter one. And I took um, some of the activities out of the PDF of the chapter and put them in. And then I turn it into an interactive activity where there are some questions that are free response. I want to try to show this. Um, and some questions are multiple choice. So I've taken those paper activities and put them online. Um, and my students who use Chromebooks, we do blended learning. Um, my students can do these same activities that would have been in the book, but it's easier for me to grade and they can do them online. Um, so if this is at the beginning of chapter one. You can see um, I've taken the activities. I've embedded the introductory video from the chapter um, and the students have to reflect on things that they'll learn. Um, I've taken some of the activities and posed other questions or included things there. Here's one of the fantastic um, inferential ways that grammar is presented. Um, so this is, you know, introducing definite articles. And um, since I'm proficiency based, we don't test dis grammar discreetly, but obviously we want the students to be familiar with what's going on. So I've just taken the paper activity, I've adapted it, I've created some multiple choice, and this way we can do this and this saves a lot. Here I put in the note cultural, so I've got my cultural note and questions there. And this has transformed brilliantly for me. My students can access this from anything, okay, um, online. It's easy to grade, they can do it at home. Um, another tool that I use with the Francais Interactive um, tools is because Francais Active has all these videos that are wonderful and free um, that go with each chapter. And um, if you're using the Spanish materials, they have Spanish videos, et cetera, as well. Um, so I have taken these videos, which are up on the right of my screen here. Um, I've taken those and I have um, added them to my YouTube channel and to make sure that I get subtitles for them. Um, and then I put them into Edpuzzle. And if you're not familiar with Edpuzzle, it's a great tool where you can insert questions directly into a video um, at the spot where you're looking for comprehension. So um, I uh, uh, use Edpuzzle for listening comprehension. Um, I found that it greatly increases listening comprehension success. Um, and um, so I'm trying to open folder here and show um, that how many of the videos that I've used. So I use them for practice purposes. Um, I use them for testing. I use the Francais Interactive testing um, videos that are available. And um, I uh, use those for my students. And the students respond very well to them. Um, they recognize the, they're the same speakers over and over again. They start to have opinions about the people. Um, they have fairly strong feelings about which people they like and which people they don't like. Um, they find some people harder to understand than others. Um, and they um, appreciate the, the fact that uh, the video materials are designed to go with the curriculum and so they're comprehensible. Um, and they, um, that's very helpful with high school students who uh, frequently there's a high level of anxiety about language learning. Some of them have had negative experiences in the past. So you can see if you go across these, these several videos are from the Francais Interactif. Um, those show you have the number of questions that are in there. Um, and so um, I, again, take advantage of all these resources, which are fabulous, because I know they go with my curriculum. If I were just going to search out on YouTube or generally on the internet to try to find level appropriate um, video resources, audio video resources that go with, with my curriculum, that's a challenge. Um, as far as the other resources that come with Francais Interactive, um, they're fabulous. Um, in particular, the vocabulary prep that um, Alex mentioned. Um, my high school students need more scaffolding. So the vocabulary prep template, which is down on every chapter, okay, um, there, uh, where is it? Okay, the Preparation du Vocabulaire. There's a generic template that Francais Interactive provides. My high schoolers need more scaffolding than that. So for each chapter, I have a um, vocab prep that I have tailored. I've taken that template and tailored it specifically for my high school students. So I've given them the themes. I've given them very specific instructions. So rather than setting them loose and saying, make 10 sets of words that are associated together, I've given them specifically 
find these words that are associated. For example, in uh, this is chapter three that I have up. So I'd have um, find um, three weather phenomenon that happened in the spring in Ohio. Find three body words for bodies of water. Find uh, three activities that you do outside. Um, so I've taken the template from Falciana Active because it's OER and I could do with it what I need. Um, I've adapted those things. Um, there are testing materials um, available. Uh, initially, I did use some of those, but they just weren't appropriate for proficiency based and for the level of my students, really, as I discovered the hard way. Um, but I do use the testing videos quite a bit. They're very helpful. Again, the video resources for this are just gold. Um, also, the cultural quests. They come in the Activité Internet. Um, I enjoy using those with my students as well. Um, I do have to caution if someone is adapting any of these materials for K-12 use um, to make sure that you screen everything ahead of time, um, including Texas French grammar, because they're definitely designed for university students. So there are drug and alcohol use references, um, and there's the complex relationship of Tex and Tammy. Um, the armadillos and Betty the homewrecker. So my kids kind of get a kick out of that, but I always have to kind of feel out with the students how comfortable they're gonna be. And then I have to make judgments as I go through the activities and change some of the things up. So um, that is something I would caution someone K-12, make sure you're previewing everything and you're probably going to need to adapt. Um, I did also wanna point out, I can't remember that the, um, the center also has other French resources and for many other languages. So if you go to their home site, they have uh, lots and lots of resources. I've pointed my Spanish colleagues there. Um, for French, um, I've used the intermediate and advanced level resources as well for my level three class, which is intermediate. And so they're doing more advanced things. So um, I use uh, some of the more advanced resources for my level three class. The video resources in particular are fabulous. Uh, I really appreciate the speaking with the native speakers um, and doing those interviews have been fabulous for me. So the, and all in all, this has transformed my program. I have no budget and I've been able to build so much just from this. So high school teachers are always, you know, that I'm talking to on Twitter, always talking about what can I do? You know, I don't have a budget or I have a very little budget. These are fabulous tools and then you can adapt them and tweak them as you need. And I'm happy to share, you know, whatever I have with people so that they can see what I've done. I'm happy to share. I've got Google Forms, all kinds of embedded videos in Google Forms, Note Couturel embedded into Google Forms for reading comprehension, all kinds of things that I've been able to do because this is an OER. Um, it's been fabulous. All right, thank you so much, Dawn. <clears throat> That's great. I'm sure there are gonna be other questions about um, specifics of adapting. But you mentioned a couple of really good tools, Insert Learning and Edpuzzle. We're gonna have to check those out afterwards. Okay. So on to Valérie. Valérie, are you still um, there? Yes, oh, can you please I'm unshare? Sure. Can you see uh, me? Oh, yes. Uh, whoop. <laughs> Thank you. And how do I unshare? Uh, for me, no. Right. Stop yeah. sharing. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Stop sharing. There Here you go. go. All right. Okay. okay. So my turn. Well, uh, so I'm last. So um, you've... Uh, You've impressed me and uh, I was very really impressed by what Alex said, uh, you know, regarding uh, the phonetics and, and, and so on. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to start with um, how it all started with us. So uh, the problem with our co the, the, the students in our community um, have very few resources and we used to uh, use a book. And I think Alex mentioned that problem as well. The book was outrageously expensive. And um, so I think the book that had to go with the online platform for all the homework and so on was over 300 or $350. Um, and the kids could not sell that back. I mean, they could sell the book back, but the online platform they were stuck with, they, could, they were absolutely forbidden to exchange it or to share it. So, um, and we tried to negotiate directly with the publishers and they they offered uh, maybe uh, you know for for the students to rent uh, rather than to buy but uh, nothing was really um, acceptable um, so our program uh, decided to 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 check out uh, français interactif we just like uh, dawn and alex have mentioned already we were familiar with the text french grammar and we used that as additional resources so it made sense 
uh, to us to, to look into that. So we all created accounts and uh, we were really interested in, um, in the amount of material that was available for us because it was like a starter pack. We could start with it and then just go from there. Um, so that's what we did. Uh, we started with it and then little by little, we adapted it. Uh, to be honest with you, the first time I started it, it just didn't exactly go very well with our student population uh, in the sense that um, there were things I'm not, I was not too, in, too impressed by, for example, the numbers uh, that you start with just a few numbers up to 60 and then uh, you're left uh, until chapter three when you just learn 70 and uh, and all that. Um, I think Alex mentioned the passé composé until uh, chapter six. Actually, for me, it's a different thing. Uh, we actually are, don't, do not dwell on grammar quite so heavily. Uh, so, of course, passé composé is important when it comes to conversations about the past, um, but we do not uh, emphasize this or stress it until the second quarter. Um, I think it's a little bit like second year at high school. Uh, you go, you, you, uh, you dig deep into the present tense and the near future, and then you go to the past uh, during the second year. Anyway, that's what I remembered because I used to teach at high school. It seemed to me that it was like that, and we've adapted that to a quarter system at, 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 at university. Um, so there are things that, that I wasn't uh, too impressed by, but, then, but I think it's because I relied or we relied too heavily on the material, trying to just use it, use it as it was. For example, using the Francais Interactive exams without necessarily thinking of our own student population, um, using the vocabulary um, worksheets. Uh, again, that's something that I adapted because that didn't quite work for me. It felt too dry and um, not scaffolding enough. I think, uh, Dawn, you mentioned it yourself. So, uh, but my, the biggest thing for me was not to have the comfort of a platform uh, in which to, um, to use Francais Interactif and to have maybe Google Forms and so on. So similarly to Alex, we have a program uh, called the Affordable, Affordable Learning Solution, and it's also for textbooks uh, that are less than, um, I think the, it's 50 or 40 or $50 uh, a, a week. Uh, so I applied, um, I presented a project to use Google tools associated with Francais Interactif in order to form some kind of platform. Of course, it's not going to be the Kia or the Henley platform, but it's, it's, uh, it's the best we could, we could do. Um, so I've, uh, I'm using the Google Classroom and in which, the Google, in which I offer every week um, a homework menu uh, that, that uh, lots and lots of Google Forms that students can fill in if they're interested. So the students are given a reflection part of um, a reflective part in their, in, in their homework. They have to reflect on their homework and decide on what they think is a priority as far as they're concerned, whether it's grammar or vocabulary or all these combined or culture and so on. I give them a menu to choose from and, uh, and lots and lots of Google uh, forms that I've, uh, that I've inserted in the Google Classroom, some on the videos, uh, some on the vocabulary, on the grammar, and I think I, I probably have between 10 and 12 different Google Forms for each chapter. But also, there are a lot, I use Quizlets as well um, as, as an option for homework. There are a lot of really good Quizlet, um, um, uh, how do you say, games and so on out there. I also use, um, I use Duolingo quite a bit. Uh, along with, uh, with Francais Interactif to reinforce certain concepts and especially the Duolingo stories are great and students are always eager to, uh, to learn more if they have, uh, if they are, I don't know, if they have to wait for 10 minutes, they're always with their phone uh, around, right? So using, using Duolingo on their phone is, uh, is perfect. 
Um, what else? I lose a lot of lots of games, and this is how I insert culture. Because as far as I'm concerned, I don't know the culture. Okay, I think um, Dawn, you mentioned the, the the culture in each chapter, and I agree that's that's really good. Um, but what I'm not too impressed about are the little notes on the side in the margins for culture that I find a little bit dry. So I like to uh, have some cultural uh, experiences such as uh, uh, going into Google, Google Maps and uh, going to street level and walking along a street uh, like Rue de l'Arrêt or Rue de la République in Lyon and, and looking left and right and see um, what kind of shops they are, they are there and uh, where would they like to stop and uh, you know things like that. Um, so basically I'm using Francais Interactive as my main resource, but I'm also adding a lot of extra material and that works better for me. Um, I also use video tutorials because some students are not very good at understanding the text grammar when they read it. So I also have Google Forms to help them uh, digest the material a little bit and maybe rephrase it. But if it's a little bit difficult, then I'm going to prepare a, a video using a Camtasia, you know, a video tutorial which I post uh, in, my, uh, in my class on Blackboard. And, but yes, I am thankful for France Interactive. I think it's an, an amazing uh, uh, resource and I'm uh, a bit sad not to see more videos being constantly uh, brought up because as you said, we know these people, uh, um, I'm, my students are very fond of Yaz, we like Charles as well, <laughs> and now these people are much older than they were 10 years ago, I'm sure. What's happened to them, I'd like to know. Uh, we know everything about Frank and Nancy and their two daughters. <laughs> uh, so I, I just would, I don't know, I, I I'd like to, would like to see a bigger, bigger library, but it's already big enough, I'm sure, and they've put so much work into it, and thankful. I'm going to be eternally grateful. And that's it. I could have shared some, but I forgot to share my, my screens. Hang on, I'm going to share my screen just to, just to, share, to show you um, um, a couple of things. For example, this is a Padlet that I use uh, in my class. I, I like Padlets and uh, this is for their presentational, written presentation, uh, presentational activities. Padlets are quite fun. Uh, this is uh, what, I, uh, what I submitted for my proposal for affordable learning solution. Um, and you have some comments on the stu from students here, what they choose to do. A lot of them just want to use their iPhones. They, they haven't bought them the, the book, but some of them choose to print out the book or they choose to buy uh, the book. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that I also use um, Flipgrid. Okay, I don't know, that's, that's the problem when you're sharing is that I don't remember where they are. Okay, Flipgrid. Oh, there, here it is. Okay, I also uh, use Flipgrid for the uh, oral presentations. Uh, my students have to talk about, for example, here they talked about what they ate and they can ask each other questions. I like, I like Flipgrid a lot. Valérie? Um, yes? I think you need to sh to switch the screen. We're oh, still no. looking at the <laughs> Padlet. <laughs> oh, you're still looking at the Padlet? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, meeting control, I'm gonna stop sharing for a while. Okay, uh, so then I'm, okay, <laughs> so share again, I suppose. Can, so I think now you can see uh, the affordable learning solution uh, project that I uh, post, that is posted on Merlot. Um, which is uh, for online resources. Okay, and then I'm going to stop sharing this. <laughs> I don't know if I can, okay, stop sharing, sharing. And uh, can, you f can you see the flip grid? I'm sorry, can you see my flip Not grid yet, now? no, no. no. Oh, okay. now, now we can see it. <laughs> oh, you could, okay, that's good. So the flip grid is really useful and I think I'm going to stop right now because I'm getting confused with, uh, with how to share and stop sharing, so there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's the excellent. So that gives us still, let's see, we have plenty of time for a Q&A. And I want to encourage you, all the participants, um, remember to use your chat function at the bottom 
there's a little uh, menu that says, uh, uh, a little tab that says chat. You can type your questions directly into the chat box and we will read them and make sure that our speakers address those issues. So let me go ahead and start, start things off. I um, wanted to, ha I have a question that goes to Dawn. You mentioned then the tools Insert Learning and Edpuzzle. I believe you said that Insert Learning was a, um, an open resource, but you did have to pay for it after it reached a certain level. Is that correct? Yes, um, it's it is it's a um, extension that goes onto Chrome or Firefox or I believe Internet um, Explorer, and I I'm a paid user, but I believe you get three to five um, that you can use free, um, and then you there's also a library so you can go in and see what other people have created, um, and then after that um, then there's a charge. Um, it is fabulous if you are doing any kind of blended learning or you want to assign homework and um, It's quite easy to take the, the PDF material from France Interactive or any of the other OERs um, and to put them into something and make it uh, Interactive and again, you can embed the videos um, in there as well. You can embed um, links to Flipgrid um, as well, which is another tool that I use. So you could really turn, um, you know, one one page into an activity where you were covering multiple skills um, and multiple modes of communication. Um, so it's it's um, it's really been helpful for me. Um, Ed Puzzle is another one where you get a certain amount for free, um, and then you can pay. There are institutional subscriptions. So if there's you know, multiple teachers in a department or a school, um, they do have a rate. Again, I'm a super user, so I'm, I'm not paying right now, but, um, and it, it, it has improved listening comprehension results with my students. I, I don't have a statistic to give you. I can just say, I can take the same listening comprehension video that I gave before using it, and what I use with it, use it now, and the results are so much greater because you can place the question directly in the listening passage where they need to find they need to find the information um, and it will pull in videos from YouTube and um, all, all kinds of other places and you can upload your videos as well so and um, that's the the videos for Fontana Interactive have been such a fantastic resource overall yeah so I want to make a point um, just to follow up uh, about all three of you mentioned that you like the videos that you use the videos in different ways and of course as a developer I like to hear that but um, I wanted to stress the fact that what you've done with Edpuzzle, you take the videos uh, because you can download all of this, right? We give you the rights to download it all. And then you've actually edited the videos. You've added a layer of information on top of the videos. So that makes it, I mean, it, basically you're seeing the same thing, all of you, is that you, our materials were a good template, a good starting point. And then you took it one step further. You added scaffolding that your students needed, or you tweaked it in some way that made it, you know, work work with your student population. And and what I wanted to say to all of you is that you mentioned also the préparation vocabulaire. Uh, that's a template in itself, and we meant it as a template. We meant it as a starting point, not as the end point. And I think too many teachers look at textbooks and they think that that's it. It doesn't give them any wiggle room to play with the materials, but we wanted to kind of suggest to you, well, here's one way of doing it, but you know, go ahead and have fun. And there is kind of this ludic or playful quality to our materials. And that's, we were trying to really invite people like yourselves to, to play along with us. So I'm, it's really, I must admit, it's really great to hear all three of you talk about how you're playing with these materials because I look at textbooks as just templates anyhow. And since they are made for a generic audience, or in our case, we made it for the University of Texas students, and we figure it's, it's up to everybody else in the world to adapt it to their students. So it's really tremendous. It's, very, it's pleasing for me to listen to you guys talk about your materials. Just to add on to that real quick, um, we had a question from the audience, from Elsie, who was, who was basically trying to define it and said, uh, you have adapted um, uh, parts of Francien Interactive, but she was wondering if you have not created your own textbook also with, with parts of 
I don't know, but it, it didn't seem like you have. Just wanted to throw this in here. But who was, was, was wondering? She was wondering if you had created your own textbook. Was that question for me, or who was that question for, for everybody? Everybody. Um, I I wouldn't say I've created my own textbook, but I've created my own curriculum mm. mm -hmm. that topically aligns with Ponce Interactive. Um, and then I have written a lot of materials, some inspired from Francais Interactif, um, some simply based on the theme, but I wouldn't call it a textbook. I don't know about Valerie and Alex. I also have not um, created a textbook. I think the longer you teach, the more material you generate and you sort mm -hmm. of build this body of, of stuff that you can use, but it's never been put together in one cohesive place other than my own head. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I, I, I would say it's the same. I, it's, it's, uh, I think it's, it's easy to have uh, Francais Interactive as a basis for what I'm going to do. And then uh, I add a lot of uh, additional material uh, because, um, because yes, uh, as, as, as uh, I think uh, Alex was saying, right? We, we've got tons of, of, of things that uh, we've been using and it was the same with the other books as well. So we don't have, we don't create our own, but uh, we, we adapt continuously. Mm -hmm. Great. There is also um, an earlier question from Julie, um, and she was interested, to, this is for Alexandra, she was interested to know what your favorite changes in the new edition were. Um, I was thinking specifically about chapter four. Um, I, it's a chapter where there's a lot of physical descriptions and um, since the book was first created, I think that um, uh, mores have changed and times have changed and people have become much more sensitive to certain images and, and the changes reflected students' new values. And so those, that would be the, the, main, the main things. I think it was really an adaptation to changing times. Yeah, I, can I? just to make a comment about that. We were getting feedback from the University of Texas students that they were uncomfortable with some of the activities. So what worked 10 years ago doesn't work anymore. And they didn't want to describe people, um, even though these were caricatures, caricatures are often playing off of sometimes, sometimes ethnic stereotypes and it made them very uncomfortable. So this is just an example of shifting, of, of changing sensibilities what was okay 20, 10, 15 years ago is no longer okay. And um, you can see it all in, in the way society is changing, dealing with the Me Too movement or whatever, whatever the topic is. What it, you used to be able to do is suddenly no longer appropriate. And so we went through, we got feedback from a number of, of institutions and a number of students and we went through and made changes. Not just in cha chapter four, it's pretty obvious, but throughout the, the textbook, so. And that's just something that's kind of ongoing. We often think of, of adapting textbooks of, of, to reflect who is now the president and what are the television programs, but there's even something deeper and that is just the public's changing sensibilities of what you can do and what you can talk about and how you can talk about it, which is just kind of interesting. I want to ask a question, a general question to all three of you. And it sounds like there was a, a learning curve that you spent the first year or so just learning the materials. How long did it take you to feel that you had permission to actually adapt? How long did it take you to feel like, okay, because sometimes people un, don't understand that open education, that OER, the whole point is adaptation, that they, um, they, they still use it like it's out of the box. Okay. Uh, well, it didn't take me long at all. It was more, uh, first, uh, the delay in, uh, in adding supplemental material was uh, simply because I first wanted to really use what was there and, uh, and see how it worked. 
So that, that just had to do with checking it out with my students, seeing how it works, and then going from there. So of course it took uh, uh, probably about a, a, a year, at, at least for each, for each level, to be completely uh, consistent to know what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. That's me. Okay. But for you, um, there was no, no sense of, you, you knew that you had permission right from the, from the beginning. Yes, because uh, my, uh, my boss is really into OER, so uh, we, we had talked about it a lot and, and we knew it was, it was fine. And I think it's pretty clear on, on, your, on your website too. Yeah, we try to make it clear, but you'd be mm. surprised because people, um, since we're, we're trying to retrain the public to understand that they can play along with us. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, have you, have any of the three of you been inspired to create your own material really from scratch? In other words, not simply just adapt a lesson from Fancy Antioxidant, but create your own content. To like be inspired by a lesson on, I don't know, like the, you talked about the activity and internet, but then do your own activity, right? Yes. Can I? Please, give me an example. Yes. Um, so, um, definitely. Um, often I've taken, um, for example, uh, chapter three, which is um, Les Vacances en France, which is vacation in France. So we cover geography and leisure activities. And um, I have, uh, scaffold that all into at the end of the chapter um the students doing research and planning vacations in france and then writing about it um writing about in um in french um how they're going to get to france where they're going to stay what season it will be in and what will the weather be like in that area when they're there and what are the local activities so um really embedding culture um as well as the language and then um, speaking in terms of proficiency level um, offering the opportunity for students to level up and write um, in the present or teaching them the future push so that they can write in the near future um, and expanding their their level um, you know moving up their level so that would be something that I've done um, also uh, like taking um, I've done for an exam for the chapter six which is about places in the city um, I've done for an exam where I've given them um, a map Hi. of a city and they have and said, okay, you're going to be a, uh, a student studying abroad. I usually pick two of them because that's where I studied. Um, and you're going to need to find this list of places but then they would have to describe where places were located and you know were relevant to each other but it was very real life so really getting into the actual context of authenticity um so i've definitely taken i've definitely been inspired from what i found in francais interactif and then to put those into as authentic of an ex uh, learning experience and creating a product as possible um, and as tools especially all the google tools have evolved you know, being able to use those incorporate. So yes, I would say I, I, I'm constantly doing that. And my class is never the same, even though Francais Interactive is my launching point. Um, and then if I could quickly, your question about knowing I could change things. I always knew I could, but it took me a year or two to figure out what exactly I was doing to figure out how to change things in the way that was best suited for my students. Also because the new actual standards came out mm -hmm. and with state of Ohio and trying to be a standards aligned teacher and align that with Francais Interactive, it just took me a while to learn. I think we have to remember that for a lot of teachers, this is very difficult because especially K-12 teachers are not taught how to write materials and are not taught how to write, they don't necessarily know how to do this. So um, I think like, the, like resources like this, like your center and doing things like this are really important to help us teach our colleagues in the field you know, everything, whether it's a university level, what Valerie and Alex have done, or, you know, what I'm doing at K-12 to share all of these things that are possible that you can do it. Because I think a lot of people come out and are used to it being handed to them prescriptively, and that's right. all they can do. Uh, that's a very good point, because I, re I remember hearing all the time when I was coming along in graduate school, you know, a textbook is not the curriculum. 
but it, it actually becomes the curriculum. It becomes everything for certain, or certainly for a beginning teacher, because they feel like they either don't have permission to go beyond the textbook or they're not adept at it. They hadn't been trained to do that. But I'm, I'm glad you made that point because um, I think when you become a really good teacher is when you become creative and you start creating your own materials. Because number one, you, you know your students and everybody agrees that um, the, the materials must be adapted to reflect the students' interests. And, and only you know that. So that's the, the point of getting around generic materials. They're gonna be generic by nature. And I, I personally think that we should do more in teacher training at, with materials, ha having them produce materials, having them learn about these cool things like insert learning and edu puzzle and so that people aren't, you know, they're not starting from scratch. There's a ton of open content out there that's really high quality. That's the other point to make. And that's being produced by all kinds of organizations, professional uh, educational organizations. And so it's really becoming more and more a matter of learning how to adapt somebody else's material. So um, let's see, do we have any other questions? So Elsie was asking if she could remix parts that are on the website or in, in the FI program. And I answered her saying, absolutely, because it has the most open license. FI has the most open license. That means that you can take any videos, audios, uh, any text that is uh, in the program, and you can put it in your own Google Docs, Word Docs, and you can p republish it and use it for your classroom. That's right. So if you wanted to produce your own textbook, uh, make a mashup of Hossian Antiactif and other things that you find out there in the world on the internet. You can create your own textbook and even try to make money off of it because it, um, it has a completely open license. So I see that we're coming up on the hour and um, I wanna thank our three participants, our three uh, uh, teachers who are doing, who are our three adapters of Hossian Antiactif. It's really been um, a pleasure to listen to you talk about your own experiences. And I wanted to mention in closing a couple of things. We have something at Coral called the Learn Community. And of course that's spelled L-O-E-R-N, Learn, a play on O-E-R. And, and the community are people who have created OER, who are implementing OER, who are reviewing OERs for others. So the, all three of you are a mem should be a member of the Learn community and you can get badges for promoting, creating, and using OER. So please go and visit that, that tab on our website. I mentioned at the beginning, we have a new OER course. There's always more information to learn because there are new um, developments with the licensing, um, new things to learn in the wonderful world of open education. So thank you all. Um, I thank Alex and Dawn and Valérie. Merci bien. And for all of you who are interested in Francie Antiti, just go visit the website. And if you have questions, you can give us a call or send us an email and we'll answer you. Thank you. All Thank right. you so much. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.